And good day. We are in our 23rd day of our study on Jesus' prayers. This time he's going to go to a mountain again. But now it's going to precede the transfiguration. I don't know about y'all, but Kathy and I enjoy watching home improvement shows. Uh, we like to watch uh, what people do. We like to get maybe ideas for little projects around the house. But you've all seen the shows or you've all seen other things where there's a big reveal. We have a lot of people that will do this when they find out whether they're going to have a boy or a girl. They do something that is a big reveal. I'm not trying to minimize or diminish or in any way mock Jesus. Please understand that. But this was time for a big reveal. But it was partial. He was only going to do this to his inner circle. He had chosen the 12. But now he's going up and there is a moment that is going to be crucial. Now, let's think about the transfiguration for a second. It was Peter who understandably misunderstood what was going on. He saw Moses, he saw Elijah, and he saw Jesus in his transfigured state. And he saw them as co-equal. Let us make a tabernacle. Let's make a tent. Let's make a shrine to each of you. And Moses fades away. Elijah fades away. And all there is, is the transformed Jesus. Jesus knew that it was important that his disciples could understand this because there was a time after his resurrection when he would reveal himself again. He needed to know that these men could see him differently through spiritual eyes. We had a reveal on the Mount of Transfiguration. And in chapter 9 of Luke, beginning there in verse 28, it says about eight days after these things. Now, Jesus had just said, take up your cross and follow me. Don't be ashamed of me or my words. And so eight days later, he goes and he took with him Peter and John and James. Those three that accompanied him on a couple of special tasks. And he went up on the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, he was transfigured. Now, was this this same mountain that Jesus kept going to that we talked about? Uh, in our last look in chapter six, was it a different mountain? You know, it, it wasn't like he climbed Mount Everest. It was going to a secluded place, a high place. Was it this place? We'll never know. But please notice that the seclusion now he brought with him these three special people. He needed witnesses. He's talking to God. He is transfigured in their sight. And then God speaks this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And now he says something different than at Jesus's baptism. He says, listen to him. Jesus is now by this, the stamp of approval of God, the voice that has now come down out of heaven, truly an answered prayer in a very direct fashion. And now he is revealed to be the prophet that was foretold in Deuteronomy, a prophet that was greater than Moses, that would come after him. Was it Elijah? No, he was a great prophet, a powerful man, because God worked through him mightily. But he was not the one either. There was now no question. In the eyes of Peter and James and John, once they put all these pieces together, they could see. Maybe that final piece was the resurrection. But now they were prepared to see Jesus as he is. John chapter 3 verses 1 through 3 is my favorite passage because it tells us we are the beloved children of God. It tells us that we have a precious hope. But in the midst of that, it tells us that when we do see Jesus, we will see him as he is and we will become like him. I can't wait. And so each and every day, we await that great day. We've got a glimpse in words and by the mouths, the witnesses of these things. Faith makes up the difference. Let us pray with faith, but let us see in this example of Jesus how God answers our prayers. And sometimes even as we say the words, 
Be ready to open your eyes and see and open your ears and hear, especially if at first all you hear is silence. God is still there, sometimes with a whisper, sometimes with a bolt of lightning, sometimes when you go away and you pray. Our Father, help us to clearly see. It's far too easy to look around and add up clues and say, I know what's going on. Father, help us to look to you. Help us to always understand the things that you have revealed to us are straight from your mind. Let us take on the mind of God by taking on the mind of Christ, who emptied himself and became a servant and was obedient always unto death on the cross. So he tells us, take up your cross and follow me. Help me, Lord, to do just that. But open my eyes so I can see where I must carry that cross. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen.